Okay, our second interview is with uh, a, a young PhD student at uh, the University of Florida who is involved in aerospace engineering. And what he has done is he has de designed an airplane that doesn't use ailerons. And ailerons are used to uh, conventional airplanes to enable them to bank and to turn. If you can't bank the airplane, it's very difficult to turn the airplane. For example, if you're in a speedboat and you want to turn to the left, you'll notice how the boat sort of leans, and uh, if you want to turn to the right, it leans the other way. The same thing needs to happen in the air, and you have to have some way of uh, manipulating the wing to make it do that. Otherwise, the airplane kind of skids around like this. It's a very difficult uh, uh, way to try and steer the airplane if you can't do it with ailerons or the way this guy at the University of Florida has uh, uh, developed to do it. What he has done is he... Like uh, Wilbur Wright uh, over 100 years ago, he's observed birds, and, you know, birds don't have ailerons. Most of us think of ailerons as flaps, but they're actually different devices, and they serve a different function. But when we look out in the wing and we see those things fold up and fold down, those are most often ailerons, uh, except when we land the airplane uh, that, that we might see the flaps. But um, what he has done is uh, he's designed a wing without them by observing, you know, how birds do it. And birds... Uh, have a more efficient way of doing this by twisting the wings uh, in, in various different positions to get that banking effect. So that's the way he has designed his airplane. As I say, it was actually the same thing that Wilbur Wright observed over a hundred years ago because he was watching birds too to see, you know, how did they bank themselves in order to make the turns that they did? And he noticed the same thing. So this is quite interesting because it, it's a uh, radical change in wing design, and uh, it results in uh, an infinite number of positions for the wing, which makes the mathematical modeling of the wing to be quite complex. And that's what he's working on for his PhD dissertation, is to get that mathematical modeling uh, optimized. So let's go ahead and watch and see what he's doing. Dan Grant is with the University of Florida. He's a uh, PhD candidate for aerospace engineering. And he's made an airplane that, that has the wings like a seagull. And the thing that attracted me to this is that most airplanes that all of us fly on have ailerons to control the banking when the airplane turns. It's yes, something sir. that we all take for granted. Yes, but when the Wright brothers first made the airplanes, they didn't use them. They used a process called wing warping. Yes, sir. And what you've done is you've gone back 100 years and you've done that again, right? Basically, yes, sir. So tell us about how that works here. So the idea with this airplane is that, as you can see, the airplane... It uh, sweeps like a like a falcon would when it goes into a dive. It sweeps its wing forward and aft. Which, if you see, when it when it uh, sweeps its wing, it doesn't have a constant surface area along the trailing edge where an aileron would sit. A typical air. So it's difficult to implement a fixed length aileron for roll control because the wing sweeps constantly. So the whole idea between wing twist is how can we employ some kind of aileron into this uh, sweeping design and still get the airplane to roll? Well, going back to the Wright brothers was to actually use wing twist. So we actively twist the wing to give us that roll control instead of an aileron. And what the, the importance of that is that without that twist in the wing or without the ailerons, you can't bite the airplane, which means you can't turn it, right? Not as easily. Okay. Uh, having an aileron or wing twist can uh, roll the airplane quite easily. As if you did, you could you could actually move the airplane or the wings asymmetrically to uh, to get some kind of roll control, but it wouldn't be as efficient as having actual wing uh, roll or wing twist or an aileron on there. Okay, now I understand you're going to be doing a lot of mathematical analysis of this wing, is that right? Yes, sir. Um, as you can see, when you when you morph the airplane, it actively changes its uh, system model or plan, which changes changes the stability of the aircraft. Uh, normally airplanes have a fixed wing and therefore it has one mathematical model to look at, uh, where in this case it has multiple mathematical models. So how can we correlate all those models together to get a stable aircraft to fly? That's going to be complicated, isn't it? Uh, so far, <laughs> yes sir. Okay, thank you. Yes sir.